Here I have a vintage art book. I bought this book around 1973. It was before I went to art college and I felt I needed to brush up on some of my general art skills because I really was only working in uh, graphite and pen and ink. And this is by Thames and Hudson. It's called How to Paint and Draw by Bodo W. Jacksimer. It was first published in the UK on the 1st of January 1967. This is the fifth impression which came out in 1972. Uh, when I uh, looked inside I see it was actually translated from a German edition um, from 1961. So it has 300 illustrations in colour, 150 in black and white. So you've got your general index here, your contents rather, and it just lists everything. Quite a few little detail there. So it goes into quite depth of what, what you can find under each section. Then you have the introduction. Um, I found the language in this was quite difficult to understand at times. It says everything which can be seen or touched is originally experienced as something plastic in space. If you wish to formulate the experience of these two senses for yourself or to communicate to others, you note down what you've seen. You draw points, lines and areas in contrasting colours on a flat surface. The image thus created gives an illusion reproducing the experience. It may be stronger or weaker or than or equal in force to the original experience according to your ability and the material you use. So the introduction goes on for quite a few pages, it shows some pictures of some old art. I don't like books where you have to wade through a really long introduction, I always want to get straight to the first page. And then it's talking again, uh, if a conversation turns to judging a picture which is finally dismissed as worthless. One often hears at the end of the clever talk, well anyway, I couldn't do it, I can't even draw a straight line. There's a lot of talking like that which I don't really like, I just want the facts, I want to know how to do things. So we go on a little bit further here about drawing. Perspective is quite good, but I found the way it was explained was quite difficult. I don't really like the black and white drawings, so I was really interested in the drawing materials. Now, at the time, I was mainly using graphites and uh, pens. We were using dip pens and a brush and bottle ink. And there's the blowpipe that it says used for fixative, but we use that for misting ink or paint. And as explained in my previous video, I was never very good at that. It has a nice little section on brushes, what to look for, and all the different nibs. Now this is really the bit that interested me, and it's not a massive amount. It has the drawing techniques which uh, this is the bit that I really was interested in. I would have loved just a separate book on drawing, but books were quite expensive. And at the time, this was the best I could find. What this artist is very good at is human anatomy. Um, I'm not brilliant at anatomy and I don't really draw people, but there was quite a large section on human anatomy. So obviously I feel that that was something this artist was particularly interested in. A uh, little bit on animal anatomy, but not really very much. I uh, didn't really find that terribly helpful. Uh, I wasn't drawing horses. I would have preferred a bit more on dogs and cats and birds. They have got a little bit on birds. That is quite interesting. Uh, the plant bit didn't really inspire me either. I've hung on to this book because it was the first art book that I bought and every art book, anyone who publishes a book, then credit should be given for actually managing to um, publish a book. So the architecture, still life, lettering, it just really has a little bit on everything. And we'll flick through. There's a page here, I think I've got a marker in. So this bit is actually about colour. Now, there was, there's nowhere near as much on mixing colour as you'd find in a modern book. It does talk a lot about colour, about chemical reactions, and um, the bit on pigments is actually really good. It's still, um, yes, I think it's got a quite a good section on pigments. I found that quite interesting. 
and then we get to the section on the different types of paints. Now you've got watercolour, oil, glue colour, which I didn't know what it was, and it only briefly mentions gouache, which I went on to use at college. A tempera, which I've never used, so that wasn't really of any interest to me. And there is no mention of acrylics. Now, acrylics were developed in 1934. I believe they were commercially available through the 1950s. And of course, they were made popular by David Hockney in the 1960s. I assume the reason they're not in this book is because it was adapted from um, a 1961 German edition. So it was probably written before David Hockney became popular. So this is basically my little book. I didn't find it hugely useful. I keep it because it's a good example of what was available in the early 1970s. And I'm going to do a comparison with this book and a modern equivalent in another video.